Okay, let's call to order the uh, July 2nd, 2019 Historic Resource Board meeting. Uh, let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mixed it up a little. <laughs> okay, everybody got your comms on? Everybody mic'd up? Oh, that one's yeah, working. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, roll call, please. All right. Uh, Scott Real? Here. Louise Here. Shirley Brewer? Here. David Madeira? Here. Yolanda Delgado? Here she's at. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Did the roll call of pledge lines? Okay, public comment. We have a. Uh, do we have anybody for public comment? No. No? Anybody? This is for public comment on items that are not on the agenda. Okay, during that, I'm going to go ahead and close the public comment. Mr. Kennedy, you're up. Any informal project reviews? No, sir. I have no informal project reviews to report tonight. Easy, huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, our consent agenda. Does anybody on the board want to pull anything on the consent agenda? Um, uh, <clears throat> the May 7th meeting, mm -hmm. there was, uh, let me see if I can get to that. May 7th. Here. Anyway, there, w there was a, we, we chose and elected uh, the Garletta House to be awarded. Uh -huh. And you state in the minutes that it was awarded to um, Georgiana instead. Didn't mention the house at all, so you might want to look at that a little okay. closer I'll and see if, because the, uh, fa the facility itself wasn't even mentioned in the, in the um, okay. records. Okay. Are you good with approving it? Uh, as as it is now, I mean, she can go back and fix it, or do you want to wait? Uh, no, we're, we, she can go and fix it. We can just okay. go ahead and approve. Anybody else want to pull anything? Anybody from the public want to pull anything? All right. Uh, we've got so we've got the affidavit of posting. My fence just fell down. Looks like we got minutes from September fourth, September fourth, two thousand nineteen. We're not there yet, are we? January 8th. January. January, January 8th. January 8th. January 8th. May 7th. Yes, the minutes have to be within, so even if you weren't at that meeting, you can. Oh. We have two different. Calls them to be. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Um, okay, January 8th and May 7th. Do I have a motion to pass or to. With the exceptions that I just mentioned earlier, I'll make a motion that we accept and pass. Uh, consent agenda, all of the items listed. A second. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Awesome. awesome. Okay. Mr. Chair, I mean, if I may, just for the record, I just want to acknowledge uh, Commissioner Yolanda Delgado came in at 6.02 p.m. tonight. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Thank you. Good. Now we don't have to worry about you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, from the wind. Oh, oh, would you like to? <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Okay, folks, uh, if you're not sure, um, San Juan has a new city manager. His name is Don Reynolds. Uh, he's first meeting tonight, so please. Uh, welcome. <laughs> no tomatoes thrown tonight? <laughs> <laughs> They're expensive. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's we've got an action item uh, considered recommendation of the Planning Commission approval of a sign for review for 301 Third Street in the downtown historic district. Mr. Kennedy, you're up. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. The item you have before you is a proposed sign package for a, a local business here in town called Lois's Unique Home Furnishings. <coughs> The um, home furnishings uh, just relocated from a location inside the Plaza Market just down the street uh, to this location located at 301 Third Street, which is better known as the Union Bank Building. 
Uh, the, uh, the business itself is uh, all permitted by right uh, in the mixed use zone, it's retail, and uh, it occupies currently the uh, Union Bank. They had their grand opening just this last weekend. Uh, from what I understand, it went well. Uh, now the, the next step in order to um, advertise the business and to label it is a sign package. The sign package consists of two signs that are made of a roll-up material or a vinyl material from what I understand. And it's, uh, the signs have already been done. Uh, they've already been handmade and painted and uh, kind of a unique color blend. Uh, one sign is two feet by eight feet, uh, 16 square feet. The other one is four feet by four feet, 16 square feet. The uh, two by eight foot sign is the one that's proposed to be located in the front, covering up that marking area up there on the front of the building to help dis uh, disguise it and kind of color up the building. The other one, four feet by four foot, that's one supposed to be located under the overhang on one of the walls under you know the overhang of the building, more for pedestrian use. Uh, based on looking over the side of the building, I included some pictures that I took when I was out in the field. It's supposed to be kind of covered up by the trees and all that, so it won't be visible from that public right away from the parking lot along the side street right there. I believe it's Mariposa, if I'm not mistaken. And um, so anyway, you wouldn't be able to see it uh, because of the brown colored building but it would be visible for pedestrian activity. Um, staff believes that this sign package is a complimentary, um, you, know, um, you know, to the building itself feature, and it would be uh, very attractive. So um, uh, that being said, um, staff uh, recommends um, that um, uh, the HRB uh, recommend approval of this sign package. Okay. And that concludes my presentation tonight. Um, myself, um, I can answer any questions you may have. Uh, we also have the applicants um, here in the audience tonight as well. Okay. Thank you. Uh, does the applicant want do you have any input? Would you like to say anything? Could you could you come up, please, ma'am, and introduce yourself? My name is Lois Wong, and uh, have a very good presentation for me. Um, I've been a merchant for eight years in San Juan Batista, and um, yes, I am leasing what was the Union Bank as well as the parking lot that's there. And um, my sign, which you have pictures in front of you, represents the decor that we have in the building. It's a uh, very decorative sign, and um, I was told that our store a destination spot. Okay, if you could hang there for a minute, I'll see if anybody wants to ask you a question. Uh, Luis, you want to start? Yeah, uh, my question is, is just vinyl? It's, it's a vinyl material, but it will be mounted on um, half-inch thick plywood and framed down in picture framing, and the framing will be painted black to match the doors. Oh, okay. There it is. Oh, okay. I bought, yes, I bought the sign. Okay. This is very cool. Did you want me to open it? You guys want to look at it? Yeah. You can. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Bet. That helps. Okay. Well, that's the one that's going to be on Mariposa. That's the one that's going to be on Mariposa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what size is the other one going to be on? Uh, the other one is two by eight, and the reason for that size is because yeah, I know. Bank Good question. Had your sign there, and they patched it up, so we wanted to cover the patchwork. Oh. Okay. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. What about lights? Are you guys going to have lights directed at it? Or? Oh, okay. It's just going to be framed with like a picture frame okay. in black. Do we still have any more questions? No. That, my, my concern was the if it's going to be wall, uh, you know, mounted on a frame. And, because uh, just like that. I, yeah. 
uh, it was yeah. brushed on the wall, yeah. right? Okay. And then trimmed with, you know, like a picture frame molding painted in black to match okay. the front doors. I think I had, there's a picture of the mold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, you have, you got it? Yeah, it is, but it's yeah. white. You mm -hmm. can barely tell. That, that, that's oh, okay. Unfair. It would be painted in black. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that was going to uh, does this fit the uh, square footage that we allow for both signs? We can come within that. Yes, ma'am, it does. Okay. I checked the square footage in relation to the uh, street frontage on both street frontages, and it fits right in. It's okay. almost like right at the limit, but it's there. Okay. Uh, from what I understand, it's going to be removed at night. It's going to be permanent. It's going to be permanent. Hmm. Yeah. And, and as far as the color, I mean, I'm just thinking about the permanent permanency of it, you know, as far as the sun hitting it and things like that. Well, you know, I don't know what, trees where, where you got the printing done. Uh, what it's type of material. And if it does look faded after a while, we would replace it off. Uh-huh. You know, or if you've been into our store, <laughs> you would see we have some standards that we're trying to uphold, so. And it's going to go over the previous right. sign right. where right. it's all stained and right. kind of right. ugly. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. No, I don't have any more. Um, we'll open it up to public comment. And maybe you might have to answer a question, but can we pull you back up if, if you do? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Trish, do we have public comment? Yes, Marjorie Palmer. I'm a resident of San Juan Batista and I've been here for 24 years and I'm from New York and I love it here and I think it's a wonderful western town with this international flavor. You have shops from um, displaying products from Mexico, you have shops that have South American products, you have um, a an Asian restaurant and Lois represents the French culture and I want to support her and I think that she has excellent taste and I think the sign represents the kind of products and um, furnishings that you'll find in her store. So I very much support the sign. And if you look at the wall that's there now, it looks terrible the way the Union Bank sign was. So this will be a big improvement to the town. And that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any other speaker. One more? Okay. Oh. There we go. Vault, 41 Monterey Street. I'm just going to reiterate what the um, lady um, said. Lois has been a really outstanding merchant downtown, president of the Downtown um, Merchants Association. She wants to enhance that building, try since the uh, building owner is not going to paint to cover up some areas that need to be enhanced and she has been very helpful for me with having the Christmas tree on the her that property too when we move it forward on with that too. So I just think that um, honoring her with having the signage would be very helpful for our community. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we're gonna close public comment and bring it back up. Any any more questions for the applicant? For Mr. Kennedy, good. Can we state an opinion? Sure. I'm pretty shy about stating my opinion. <laughs> <you know. laughs> uh -huh. I I think it's beautiful. I mean, it's just it, totally in keeping with what we're trying to do here in San Juan Batista, and it's very tasteful, and I love the colors. <clears throat> okay. Do we? So are we going to recommend that the sign uh, goes on to the planning commission? Yes. Okay. I so far. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. So, do we need a motion? Trish, we, is this, uh, we're not really approving it, but we're moving it on. Do we, I guess we can always, we can just um, a motion and then. Yeah, just, okay. since it's, there's no resolution. Yeah, there's no resolution for it. Yeah. Okay. If you want to make a motion. I'll make a motion that uh, consider for recommending to the, to city council. Planning oh, thank you, Commissioner. I'm sorry. Oh, well, we can bypass them and go straight to no. Uh, uh, let's go to uh, to plank and recommend uh, for approval. Okay, do you have a second? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Good deal. Moves on. Good All right. We are down to.
Actually, uh, Mr. Chair, if yeah. I could just make an announcement to the applicants, because this is just one more segment of the hearing. Yeah. Um, to the applicants, um, Lois, just real quick, if you just uh, stick around, because um, it's already been recommended onto the Planning Commission. So after this part of the hearing adjourns, Planning Commission takes over, and then they make the final motion. So I'd just would like you to just stick around so that way you can hear all the whatever testimony may happen. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, we're down to the comment section. Um, any historic resource board members have a comment? Nothing? No. Nope. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, city planner. I have no comments, sir. City manager. No. Awesome. Okay. So we have a motion to adjourn the historic resource board. Make a motion, we adjourn. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. All right. Moving along. And that was such a long meeting. Does anybody need a break? <laughs> okay. So now, as uh, Mr. Kennedy was saying, that now we, we wear two hats. So now we jump into the Planning Commission meeting. Um, uh, Tuesday, July 2nd, 2019, Planning Commission meeting. We'll come on a call to order. Can we have a roll call, please? Here. 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 All right, consent agenda. Uh, is there anything on the consent agenda that anybody wants to pull? Other than what I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And so I'll make a motion to go ahead and approve uh, consent agendas A, B, C, and D, and E. Do you have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, here we go. Um, So the next section, section five, is a public hearing item. Um, Mr. Kenny, quick question: There's this isn't going, there's not going to be any action from this board on this. It's just more of a. If I could just go ahead and comment yeah, on that, and maybe maybe ahead. just give a could just even give a quick report. Um, the, this item is basically a recommendation from the planning commission. So yes, it is a public hearing item. It's a basically you know deliberation testimony and then a recommendation on the city council uh, the item we have before you and uh, the city manager uh, mr. Reynolds will um, probably be taking over here um, uh, real quickly but just to kind of give you a quick rundown this is an amendment to the development agreement for Rancho Vista uh, by Meritage homes and it's to cover uh, pending items I, I, I don't know the details but that's where mr. Reynolds can uh, go ahead and uh, step in and so this was discussed uh, between uh, previous city manager uh, Ed Tweez and the development um, um, group or firm and uh, now it's before you tonight to go through the proper channels before it finally gets finalized that concludes my statement I have don't I get to recuse myself? Uh, yes, oh, at this yeah. time. Yes, I'm sorry at this time. Um, I heard too much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah um, for the record, uh, uh, Planning Commission, uh, Dave Maderos uh, has to recuse um, because of the radius. Yeah, he's within 500 feet. I do apologize. That just dawned on me. Thank you oh. for reminding me. I didn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, Chair? Yeah. Um, if you'd like me to proceed, I'm happy to. Um, Ed uh, was very generous with his time leading up to my first day today, so uh, I did my best to get up to speed on this complicated issue. Um, but if I can put it in simple um, terms, am I on? Is, is, is it on? So it's working? Let's see. Okay. Real good. Let's make sure. Yeah, it's on. There it is. I'm generally loud anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I understand because you need to record it. Um, so this, this is a third proposed amendment to the uh, development agreement and the development agreement tried in 2015 to set forth all the fees and lock them in place and uh, did a fairly good job of defining uh, the various fees you can see there's a whole bunch of them um, the original agreement pages 18 and 19 are part of your packet my gosh there are um, um, 
17 different different fees. Um, and, and what this proposal does is, is tries to clarify one in particular and distinguishes uh, uh, development fees from impact fees. So we collect development fees uh, to cover our costs of, of the development based typically on units or floor plans. And then impact fees help us pay for our infrastructure, such as water connections, traffic improvements, public safety, park development. So um, in the original agreement, they were lumped together into one section, 2.10. And we had some issues, uh, especially uh, with the previous city manager and, and with Mr. Tweez, frankly, about the definition of, of a 2,400 square foot home. So you'll see in the, in the draft agreement um, edit highlighted there um, in the yellow um, that, the, that the basic fees were going to be based on a 2,400 square foot home. And there was a disagreement between the city and the developer on what a home was. And so um, Ed, Ed and the previous city manager felt that it included garage, for example, and patios, and the developer did not agree with that. Um, and so uh, that would decrease or increase the square footage. And so the, the fee itself is based on the square footage of the building. And so what the amendment does, first of all, is stipulate on page four of the ordinance, and I highlighted it on my copy, um, that the unit of measure be uh, 2,400 square feet of conditioned space per dwelling unit. So that way it was clear and there was no different way to interpret it. This is the one way we're going to interpret it. And, um, and then it goes on to provide an example that if it's a 2,600 square foot house, then, then it's 10% higher and, and we make adjustments based on the square footage. But we don't, we get away from this, um, um, this uh, uh, patio, conditioned space, etc. So it makes it simpler to interpret. Um, and then it locks it in at, at fees appropriate for, for, for now, for, for July. And then the impact fees are separate now. They're in a separate table, and they've all been updated. So if you compare the water connection fee is 9,000 in the recommended uh, adjustment amendment to the agreement, and there's only 7,000 in the 2015 agreement. So uh, to the city's benefit, we have updated fees. And we felt that uh, in, in doing, uh, approaching it this way that we have a compromise that's acceptable to the developer as I understand it I haven't spoken to the developer I don't even know if they're here um, um, okay thank you <laughs> um, I will hear from them and, and see if that's acceptable to them um, and and uh, and the point is is that we want, we want to move forward uh, together with the developer we want to avoid any legal conflicts or other things that might delay the project and this is a compromise that was reached between uh, the previous city manager and the developer and that's what we're bringing forth today so that's the best that I understand it, and the developer is more than happy to uh, interpret this uh, for me and, and help me uh, edit if necessary. So there you go. It's okay. a lot to absorb, isn't it? Um, questions? No, I don't have any questions. Yeah. It was like 25,000 total, right? The yeah. ending. So it was 21.25 per floor plan, and now it is uh, uh, 21.25 per floor plan again on the condition space. Sure. Question. Uh, no. We. We were looking, looking up uh, in 2,400 square foot plus the increase in 10 percent, or just in the the, the units vary in size. They vary, they vary in size. At least. So uh, this is an average fee, and then as units get built, then we'll adjust accordingly. Oh, okay. Right. So some are larger. Yeah. yeah. Start at 2,000. So when they sell their homes, they sell, a, of course, living space, 2,400 square feet, right? Yeah. So if they include their patio and garage in that 2,400 square feet of living space, we're going to negate that? Or how? what no, is it? What, what is the interpretation? It's just, just a condition space. So condition space for the building code, and that's what we use as a reference to the okay. building code, is that space condition for living and habitable space. So that's drywall, heating, ventilation, okay. electricity, water, yeah. Which garages and patios on it? That's not living space. I know. Not legal living space. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Anything else? I have a quick question. I know, I know it's the school district charges. I'm, I'm back to or uh -huh. page 24. School district charges per square foot. Um, why isn't it public safety can't do the same? You're kind of locking them in on just a, uh, and they are locked in on just a specific amount. Um, is that something that we've done for a while? Or I, th I always thought we had a square footage for our public safety. I can't answer that question. I don't okay. know. Um, I'd have to go back and look at the actual okay. resolution that adopted that fee. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I, as soon as I asked you that, I went to him. But he's not going to right. I, I can he look at. He stepped in the door yesterday. Uh, today. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. No. No. That's fair. That's fair. We'll do, we'll do the best we can. Is a. Uh, it sounds like we're being nice to each other. I mean, it sounds like we're everybody's starting to work together a little bit more. That, that was my impression as well. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, public comment. Any public comment on this? Do you want to hear from the applicant? Oh, yeah, the applicant. Yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Uh, my name is John Bayless. I'm the mayor of the Jones. And um, it, it is a rather complicated issue. Um, it's been going on for a number of years. It had a number of interpretations as um, staff has changed. Um, the, we, we were paying our fees under protest based on how they were being administered. Um, we tried to work with the city to work when the uh, water moratorium was in place. And we actually waived our time frame at that on our first 45 minutes that we pulled. Um, and so we've started paying on our, re we're getting ready to start paying on our remaining 40 permits out there. Um, we pulled a few and we did pay, under, pay those under protest. But the, the concept of the development agreement when it was done was that our fees would be fixed for that project. And in addition, we would give additional fees. And we gave $400,000 for water. Um, we came back and gave some more money for uh, water and sewer. And the drafting of the agreement was such that it had multiple interpretations. So what we settled on with Ed was that we have overpaid at probably about $8,000 a house on average for the first 45 permits. And we are not going to seek reimbursement for those that is done. For the 45 going forward, even though our fees were low, our opinion was they were fixed lower back in 2015, it is, we will agree to today's rate. So if I walk in the door and have a building permit, we're just paying the same rate as everybody else, um, which ironically is lower than what we were paying. Um, the concept of counting conditions, you know, uh, condition space is what you charge for a school charge based on condition space. No city jurisdiction, they charge building permit fees rate based on um, square footage of porches and garages and things like that. They don't charge impact fees. A garage doesn't cause an impact to water or sewer. And so you shouldn't pay more fees for water and sewer just because you have a garage. And we, we settled on it. We'll just leave the fees that are paid. We'll pay today's fees just like we didn't have a development agreement in some manner and just go forward with the remaining 40 permits. Any questions? Questions? That is what I did. Thank you. Sorry about it. bumping over you there. Public comment now. Anybody? I don't have any cards on this side. Speak now. No? Okay, we're going to close the public comment. Bring it back up to us. Um, any more questions, concerns? Sounds a nice, to me, it's a nice clarification, and, and it, we're beneficial. I mean, the city's getting a benefit, and also the developer's getting a a benefit, so it seems like maybe there's a resolution now right. going forward. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, good. That's that's good to hear. Okay, um, so we got to do a resolution on this. To what exactly we were bumping it to the city council? Is that what we're yes. doing? Is we're yes. saying we approve yes. of this and yeah, move it on? Yes, it's 2019. Yeah? Okay, I'm just trying to figure out what the resolution meant. Page 26. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. The council will consider an amendment to the ordinance, but with your resolution and support. Or, or. Okay. Okay, does anybody want to no, it's on 26, tackle that one?
15 is this? On page 26. I think it's 26. Yeah. Resolution right here. You want it? Yes, 26. We need a motion? Yes. Yes, yeah, 26. Yeah, oh, okay. well, we're just painting. I'll give you a resolution, resolution on the planning, um, resolution 2019XX, resolution of planning commission to the city of San Juan Bautista approving and amending the Rancho Vista subdivision development agree between Meritage Homes of California and the city of San Juan Bautista and recommends to the city council. We have a second on the I second that. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Yeah, not 15. Trish, which one? Is that 19? 15. 15. 15. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, before yeah. we move on to the next item, let me go get uh, Commissioner Medeiros or David real quick. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could we get him? Okay. Um, did, we, did we pass that? Or does, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll Four. sleep. I'm sorry. Four old, yeah. <laughs> okay. You, you just messed everything up. Now. Another uh, an action item, and this is on the sign, sign that we saw earlier. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so anything further? Pretty much. I think. Uh, yeah. Pretty out. much. I include the staff report back in the historic resources. So nothing further. Okay. Uh, does the applicant have any more to say on the on the project? Nothing. Okay. Yeah. Public comment on this subject. Anybody? No, I don't. Okay. We'll close public comment. And then. Uh, any more discussion about that? No. All right. We're to our action. Who wants to who wants to resolve the approval? <coughs> okay, I will. Resolution 2019XX, a resolution of planning commission for the city of San Juan Bautista approving the sign for a new retail business located at 301 Third Street in San Juan Bautista, APN 00-170-005. Okay, that's 20, uh, so 2019 16. Okay, mm -hmm. we have a second. I second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Here you go. Okay. Wow. Oh. Wow. <laughs> We're just moving along until we get to the new place, to this new stuff. Okay. Uh, here we go. <laughs> okay, number seven is a discussion item. There won't be any action taken on this. It uh, sounds like it's more of a informational. That's correct, sir. Due to the fact that this subdivision will be in our sphere of influence. That's correct. Okay. And uh, let me just go and give a quick staff report, if I may. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, and staff, and um, um, the public. Uh, the item before you is a county project for a major subdivision. Altogether, I count six lots in total on the based on the map. Uh, what I did was uh, I included that you may have received already, and I passed it out uh, to staff, and also I left uh, pa uh, copies over there on the uh, on that table over there where the public speaker cards are. I wanted to include more of an enhanced version of the vicinity map. The vicinity map I included in your packets just showed just a, a, a red-shaped image uh, with, the, with the city nearby on, on an aerial photo. But what I want to do is further show you the location the location of the city limits and the sphere of influence. And um, anyway, what this is is um, it, it's altogether um, it's about let's see it's it's altogether about 30 acres in size. And this is a major subdivision. I don't have any proposed development spearheaded by San Benito County. And it's to divide a parcel 
into six parcels in total, um, or into five parcels in total with one remainder, uh, from what I can count. Um, altogether, it'd be um, uh, it'd be like one acre parcels in total. The zoning out there is uh, county zoning agricultural, uh, which allows five acre parcels by uh, as the minimums. So the zoning is proposed to be changed as well to more low density residential from what I'm understanding. Um, so tonight is to really take this item before the Planning Commission in a public setting to gather information. Uh, we intend to propose and write a memo back to the Planning Commission, or back to the county I meant, of the City of San Juan Batista's um, position on this. This is inside our sphere of influence, and so, which means any um, propo uh, county project must be reviewed by us, and we give a statement back to them, whether we support it or we do not. Uh, one thing I will say after reviewing the county general plan, it is required that any county project in spheres of influence of the city of Hollister and San, and San Juan Batista, they must tap into city served sewer and water uh, before uh, any development should take place. So that's where we are uh, right now at this time. I can answer any questions you may have, um, and, and, um, and that's pretty much all I have. Luis, question? Okay, uh, is not the, the uh, fluent zone? I'm sorry, can you? Is not the fluent zone? Influent? Fluid? Oh, the flood zone. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that. I misunderstood. Uh, the, uh, there's no record based on the map the, the, um, that we were reviewing on the general plan. I can't see the, uh, the flood zone uh, impacts this. Okay. The site. Let me, my, my concern about the using septic tank and being in flood zone. Five parcels and that can turn in ten, ten homes, right? Yeah, there's a trend in go through the application here on that. I don't believe it's that many. Did you say five acre minimum? Uh, five acre minimum uh, based on the county, uh, the, uh, the county zoning agricultural. How does that get changed uh, at the county level? Uh, that would have to be going through a zone change process at their level. Okay. So that's nothing that we have to concern ourselves with at this point. Based on the application, they do check off zone change uh, on there. Okay. So uh, uh, we're basically uh, uh, stating our, our opinions and our, our, our position based on the major subdivision and the zone change on there. But they're not, at this time, uh, planning on developing it? It's just for the subdivision process at this point? It's just for the subdivision process at this point, from what I can tell, based on the application process. I did ask the question to the county uh, that, you know, do you have any development? And at this time, they, they, don't have any, um, they don't have any site and development, you know, design plans that I was able to get. So they're not looking for multifamily or single family or any, we don't know anything? I, I don't know. Point. I don't know that uh, yeah. that those details at this point. Okay. Doesn't it indicate a major subdivision on the front page where it says zone change? Yes. So it says says major subdivision. Major subdivision. Yeah. It's actually more than five parcels. Exactly. More than five, uh, and that qualifies as a major subdivision. It's like basically not no different than like Rancho Vista or Copper Leaf. You yeah. just treat it just like that. I'm still thinking. Um, okay. Uh, one of the one of the things I'd like to know within uh, the area of influence, what is it that's? I mean, what can we do? What can we say? What power do we have over this subdivision? 
as 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 a as a, as a, a, a government body. I mean, we uh, at this point, from what I can tell, uh, uh, at this point, being inside the sphere of influence, we uh, we do have the authority to make a statement to the to the county planning commission and county board of supervisors mm -hmm. that the uh, city of San Juan Batista either supports or to, or opposes this project. You know, for these reasons, mm -hmm. um, even though it's county jurisdiction, we do have say in uh, into how how it all takes place. Okay. And what is our influence on whether we oppose it or? Our, you know, our influence because based on you know being a jurisdiction nearby, you know, and so forth. Now, you know, there is the idea, you know, about further annexation down in that area as well. That was something myself and former city manager Ed Tweez were talking about. But when you look on page two of the the uh, eleven by seventeen sheets that uh, that I handed out, mm -hmm. when you look at the blue line, it's this sheet right here, yeah. folks, yeah. right here. That's the, the sphere, right? The that. blue line is the city limits. And, oh, okay. Yeah, the city. And the, the green is the is the sphere. The sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, when you see where the blue line ends, right there, in order to annex it, we need to annex all that land all the way down to Mission mm -hmm. Vineyard and then further south. You know, there has been talk with some of the property owners about possible annexations, uh, but nothing's been turned in yet at this time. So that's that's a position right there that we can take. That can we consider a possible annexation and further discussion with the property owners. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing to consider, another thing to uh, uh, take into consideration. When I spoke to the county, they haven't even assigned it to uh, one of their staff members, one of their planners yet at this time. So they're they're pretty early in the process on this. So it's even a question mark if this even if this might even go through. Another question: Is this land being used as, as act or for cattle or something like that? For say, it's, it indicated it was ag. I don't know. No, yeah, but is is actually used or is back and or. <clears throat> Uh, from what I can tell, it's vacant right now. Now, I haven't been down to the site to check it out, yeah. but there used to be a building on site. But based on the latest aerial photos I was able to look at, it looks like something was demoed. You know, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I can't really tell what it's being used for. It's vacant right now. It's just right. open. It's building. referred to as agricultural pasture. There used yeah. to be a trailer on there, mo mo mobile home. Even if it's... It's cut out? Oh. Yes. Uh -uh. <laughs> So, oh, okay. Yeah, they call it pasture in their application. Question. Um, is the city council also going to see this? Is this something they have to review over? Right now, uh, it's, uh, uh, I haven't uh, planned on scheduling it for city council. We can, but the, the comments to the county are actually due tomorrow, July 3rd, based on their application. However, after talking to the county, they actually agreed to give us a window, a further window. Of um, of time to review. When did they get you this info? Uh, they got it to me like uh, maybe about a week or two ago, a couple weeks ago. It was like June nineteenth, I think it was, if I'm remembering the date. Okay. And actually, it came to me by regular mail, and it was received uh, at the end of uh, the week of um, the week before last. So okay. late, late June. And you said that the San Benito County ordinance states clearly that they have to use. They have to use our sewer. Uh, based on the county general plan, the county general plan requires oh, okay. that um, when any development takes place inside spheres of influence, that local jurisdiction shall be consulted with, if that's the right word, to use city sewer and city water. Do we have the capacity to take that on at this point? I think that's probably, yeah, I'm not that's, sure. That's one of my first projects is to uh, <laughs> measure our capacity and report back to you because we have a lot of uh, property owners that want to develop both water and wastewater if we have the capacity. So uh, we need to make that determination. It's in the current budget. So we already have a proposal for uh, studying that. Hopefully we'll get it done in the next couple months. Okay. I think um, sure. just a comment about bringing to their attention that, that this proposal is not consistent with their general plan means that when they go to file their secret documents and others, they may have a headache, they may have a problem. And in order to be in compliance with their general plan, they're going to have to come to us. And we don't have much of sewer infrastructure on that street right now. So there's going to be a pretty sizable cost 
And so they need to know that up front as they're going in and exploring the feasibility of the project. Mm -hmm. That we're, thank you for bringing this to our attention. This is one of our most significant concerns, and we need to fix that. that and that was kind of where I was yeah. going to, exactly. you know, on the, uh, uh, I, I know they've got it marked as septic, but if that's going to end up happening, that's going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars of for sure. pipeline and yeah. street repairs. And, yeah. yeah, that's going to be brutal. Okay. Um, any more questions? I would have a concern about uh, if they if they get that approved to go from the five acre minimum, uh, is that going to be a countywide thing? If that's approved, then they can Just go the to parcel. the to the smaller parcels instead of the five acre minimums Just throughout all of San Benito County. I think just for that area. Just for that area, because it'll be a zone change. Just for that, you know, just, just for that. Just for this particular thirty-acre parcel. Right. Just for that one. So yeah. That, who's changing that zone? That's the county. County jurisdiction. Yeah, and if a county changed that zone, it, it can be sold as smaller parcels. That's correct. That's why they're going to subdivide it. So the problem I have with this, is, not the problem, but concerns I may have with it, is. How is it going to affect the future development of San Juan Batista? How does that impact us in that way? I mean, it, it just seems like uh, if we're going to annex that area, if we are, just saying, you know, what are we annexing? And, what, you know, what is it going to be residential? Is it going to be industrial? What is it? And how does this connect to the city? I don't, I don't see how the city of San Juan Batista and the county is coming together on this for that purpose. And is there going to be an impact report that we're going to get as a city saying how this is going to work for our city? Are we going to get some kind of positive feedback that says, the reason why we're going to go forward with this and with the county and the city of San Juan Batista is because this is be an opportunity, an investment, yada, yada, whatever it takes. I just don't see other than somebody coming in and saying, we're going to subdivide it. See you later. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I want to see a, a report that comes back to the city and says, this is a plan that we're going to put together with the city of San Juan Batista, being it's within a, a sphere of influence. And this is good for the county. This is good for San Juan Batista in so many words. I don't hear, I don't see that coming out of the, the paperwork right now. No. And, and we'd like to see that. And what is our responsibility and uh, to oversee that, to make sure that we as a city have something to say about what goes in there? Yeah. You know, if we're going to annex, what are we going to be annexing to? Now, uh, for instance, the type of homes that go in there and the rest of the property, what's going to happen to the rest of the property? And is it for uh, low in, uh, low income homes? If so, in what in what fashion? Because we could be looking at apartments there or something. Single family one acre parcels. You know, these, these are single family one acre parcels. I understand, but you know, what control do we have over that to make sure it stays that way? Mm -hmm. If it's county, if we annex it, I guess we have, we have more control. Yeah. But uh, I've been listening I, to that for the last thirty years. Right. So where do we go with that? And I just hate to think. We're going to leapfrog into this thing and, and yeah. we'll lose control. Mm -hmm. So what, what, is the, uh, what is the real plan for this? And how is this going to benefit the county and city? That's it. The applicants are here. Mr. Dassel, right. do you have anything to say? <laughs> yes, okay. Oh, great. Let's, let's, have, let's, let's hear what he has to say. First. I should have waited. <laughs> <laughs> you might have this, yeah. Well, good evening. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to thank the uh, Planning Commission and staff for an opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Jim Dassel. I live at 451 Mission Vineyard Road, San Juan Batista, and have lived there for over 40 years. Presently, uh, uh, I, I feel like this is a neighborhood project. We had the opportunity to acquire this property a number of years ago, and I, and I really took issue with the way it appeared in San Diego Live and, and called a major project. By definition, a major project is, from what I understand from planners and developers, is four or more. This is a total of six potential lots split 
houses or properties. We're not applying for any building permits or whatever. There's 30 plus acres there. Uh, and our plan would be to uh, have a lot split for six potential building sites. Uh, I'd like to say that I, I am local, my wife's local, we've lived here for 40 years, and I, and I really think that the definition of being a building planner or a developer is, is not my deal. Um, I'm part of this community and have been for a long time. Kids went to school here, my son still lives here. Uh, unfortunately, two other children can't afford to live here. And, and I think that's probably one of the reasons why I'm interested in trying to develop this property into something that may be something that's affordable. Um, I, I can tell you that when the property became available it would, to my wife and I and our family, it was somewhat of an eyesore. Uh, although the Sangroth family owned that property for many years, they moved on and it transitioned to several owners and it deteriorated. And this is a neighborhood situation. Uh, over the course of the last four plus years since we've owned the property, we've tried to enhance that property and I, and I think we've uh, improved the view shed, if you will. At least uh, I'd like to think we have and I, I think there's neighbors here tonight that would concur with that. Uh, not being the developer type or having a full ability or knowledge into knowing how this process goes I've enlisted the help of Alan Andred, very qualified civil engineer and land planner. And it was his suggestion that possibly we consider the development of the, of the 30 plus or minus acres, it's really closer to 31 acres, uh, into six equal parcels, not necessarily in size, but it was the best way of utilizing the land as the geography uh, predicates how we have to use it. And so that said, that's why we, we proposed and presented this to the county of San Benito. And, and at this point, uh, it's early on and it's preliminary. Uh, as stated earlier, uh, I'm not a developer. I don't intend to be a developer. I don't even want to be a developer. But in, in trying to find out the affordability of the next generation of folks, uh, that are going to be running our city and town someday, uh, it's got to be affordable. And, and I think that this can be an affordable potential for locals that can't afford to actually live here. The next generation cannot afford to live here. It's uh, pretty much uh, available only to the outsiders that have the net worth that can make the investment in living in this nice place. That said, um, I, I know that I'm going to run out of time here pretty quick and I have a lot of things I'd like to say but I'm not going to belabor that. I'm here to kind of try and address questions and I think there are already some questions that I've heard and I'd be happy to try and do that if you have those. Yeah, why don't we do that? Do you, well, you have a couple questions? I'm concerned about the infrastructure, the sewer, the water. Um, you say uh, septic, you know, uh, yeah. and, and it's, you're going to tap into our city. Package, you'll see that the proposal intends to, if, if it's developed, would intend to use septic systems. And that's the, the norm on Mission Vineyard Grove. There's no uh, city sewer capability on Mission Vineyard Grove. Uh, Mr. Andrad, uh, my civil engineer, and fellow that's helping me on this project and has been doing the math detail work that I'm not capable of being able to do, uh, has not indicated that that's a, that could be an issue. It's clear that we presented this as a potential septic tank situation. Uh, I'm not aware of anything that falls within the sphere of influence of any municipality having to be required to be hooked up to a water or sewer uh, municipal provided system. As far as the water is concerned, uh, I had numerous conversations and discussions with Michelle LaForge mm -hmm. over the course of the last year, year and a half, about the availability of city water. Presently, there is one city connection there that serves a water trough for the livestock that's grazing on that property. Uh, Michelle had indicated that she had no problem providing city water to 
six, uh, five additional uh, hookups, uh, provided that we follow a very, very formal hookup procedure. She provided that in writing to me. Uh, I signed it and sent it back. Uh, it's somewhere in the right. files. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, there, uh, her comments, I think, were, uh, God, we need the additional revenue to pay for the expenses of the new water systems that were being developed. <coughs> That's the best that I can answer the water and the sewer at this point. David? No, I just, like I said, whatever we go with there, I would like to say that even if we have an annex to area, there is a connectivity there other than sewer and water that merges with the city and, you know, it becomes an opportunity for the city to merge with that, in that area, an opportunity to find ways to annex the area because that project is there, you know what I'm saying? And if we do, is it walkable? Uh, area, you know, can we get to town? You know, what about traffic? What, you know, that kind of a thing. So that, uh, but I'd like to hear that kind of development. And as far as affordable homes, that's that's an eye opener for me too as well. Uh, you're not planning on planning to build anything. We're just doing a parcel plan. Just looking forward. I'm just looking and, to that. And I don't want to get into a dogfight and be caught in the middle of an annex or not annex, in right. city, not city. Right. I'm looking to explain the project as best as I can. I'm not going to be here and gone. Um, a good example of that is what you've seen in the two major developments that are here. I'm not that. I don't even want to be that. Um, you've got your hands full of those boys. But that said, uh, I'm looking for communication with the city and there'll be questions that will come up in your mind as you're holding the leaves or mowing the lawn or cooking supper and I'm available. My cell phone number is in that packet that you received and I'll do my best to answer any questions that, get, that didn't come up tonight or address any questions that any of the neighbors may have um, and I'm looking for the blessings from San Juan Assembly County Building and Planning. That said, if you're done with me, I'll, you know, I'll be here. I'll, I'll see if Shirley has a question. I, I wonder, in my own mind, if you don't plan to do anything with this property that you're now asking San Benito County to allow you to subdivide. No, I'm not asking them to subdivide them. I'm okay. asking them to to give me a parcel map split for the property, not to subdivide. Okay. Just to do the parcel map split. And I might say that <clears throat> there are, to the east of this property and to the west of this property, there are numerous residences, my, my own home included, my own personal home, I lived about 100 yards from this property, that are on less that are on one acre or less property. So it's consistent with what's out there now. Well, I, I, I just, trying to put together the statements about the affordable housing and you know you want to provide that that kind of thing and, and but yet you have no plans to do anything. No, I, I think what, I think the message is, is you know, there, there are, uh, I'm, I'm third generation of San Diego County. My son is with the is fourth generation. And it's real clear that most of the younger generation can't afford to live in San Benito County when they're starting out. They go to Merced or Fresno or Bakersfield or they certainly can't go down south and they sure, sure as heck aren't going to go north. And so if there are properties available that have a rural setting, um, the potential and the choices that are out there are very limited. This, this may add another choice. Scott. Further yeah. question? <clears throat> yeah, I just, I guess the, the, I, the, here's the confusion. The yeah. application 
It's a major. major subdivision, and then it has mm -hmm. the description and purpose that says subdivision existing five acres and 25 acres into a certain amount of parcels. That's, I guess, that's where I'm a little confused. I, I don't control what Alcindia County um, categorizes projects. We're just looking for a parcel map split at this point. And we would call it the same thing. We would call it a, a major subdivision just because yeah. that's that's the that's the, 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 the crux of it. And I'm, I'm, I'm a little upset with the county that they didn't give you the heads up about the sewer thing when you first started talking to them. Um, They've had this since, I believe, uh, February the 19th. I think that's when it was. That's what it says, February. Yeah. What was it? So February. February. We need to get together. Okay. And uh, if you're not all that familiar with what's going on with San Diego County Building and Planning, they're going through a transition oh, yeah. with staff. Yeah. I understand. Well, we're we're familiar with that. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're uh, just I actually, um, we were going to try and submit this before the end of last year, and we didn't have the capability to take the money. Okay. Um, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate and your I'm input. I'm here to answer any questions that anyone else might have while I'm here. I appreciate the time and attention and. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Do we have some public comment on it? Yes. Uh, James Gassel. I was just put it in in case they had questions okay. or maybe I could address them. Okay. Okay. Should I be sure to grab the answers? Uh, Darlene Boyd. Thank you. Darlene Boyd from the 22 North Street, having served on this uh, planning commission for a while and following this for the last six years. I would like to put my input in. I know that we had a lot inside of the city that they wanted to um, cut down to smaller parcels. We declined that because it's in what we consider the industrial zone. Right now we have to do a lot of work on that side of town and that's all zoned industrial. And I can't see because he's talking residential why we would want to um, divide parcels at this point to set it up for residential when we don't even clearly know what we have got going on, on that side of town and have, and I know that the Planning Commission needs to come back and study that and that's one of the things Mr. Reynolds has been charged with doing. <laughs> so um, before you guys have even figured out what it is that this town wants and where, I don't see any reason to have any parcels in the county divided because, you know, we may, we might even want an agricultural ring around this city so that we can maintain it as it is because that is something that you need to think about, okay? And I know that it's very unfinished and I know that, you know, he's trying to do it for the kids because it, I know housing is unaffordable. I'd love to have my kids living up here too. But um, and I also know, having been involved with the city planning and stuff, because I was here for the general plan, etc., that until you guys actually lock in what it is that you want for that side of town and how you want it to look and how you're going to see anything else tie into it, I wouldn't approve dividing up anything in the county that is within your sphere of influence at this point. And that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? Yes, Valerie Eglin.
you've got some significant uh, tourist uh, kinds of uh, activities, and that all of that could very well be brought to the economic development for San Juan. So if you're breaking it down into five acre pieces, and each one is sold, this is not affordable housing. It, it's a very, very desirable thing to have a five acre piece. And I don't think that a person who can afford a, uh, a modular home is going to be able to afford a five acre piece within this close of a distance to San Juan. So I just argued the affordability there, but I would uh, definitely uh, uh, consider, and I'm sure that that's probably on your agenda anyway to very much uh, scrutinize the situation and what San Juan wants. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Trish, any more? Yeah. Um, if, may, I, may I address? Sure. Yeah, you had a speaker card. Uh, just in the relation to. Could you do me a favor? State your name. For oh, the record. Sorry, James Dasson. I live on Slants Road. Um, I think we got a little on the weeds with the affordable uh, housing part of it and uh, the five acre lots. Um, the parcel is stated as a 30 acre parcel and the county allows for five acre subdivisions. That's a county code. This particular project, the idea was to utilize one acre lots and then put 20, the remaining 25 acres in perpetuity, which would be the grazing and current existing use that it is today. Um, the idea of the one acre lots were to be manageable size places for most people, but still allow them to have an agricultural aspect on their property. Uh, much like we did on our one acre lot with the horses and the 4-H projects and sugar beets and whatnot. Um, the affordable comment that my dad made, I feel, was in relation to his own children. We're having a, a project that would allow my two sisters and myself to remain in the, in the area. Uh, I was fortunate enough to find a fixer upper that I've worked on uh, for the last, uh, going on eight years. Um, I'm still working on it, um, but my sisters weren't in that category because it just wasn't there. So I, I think that's what he means by affordable. We're not portraying that um, we're going to be putting them low income housing. Um, and again, uh, I, I felt like that kind of got misdirected there. Um, so any other questions you might have that I hope that clarifies? Questions for Thank you. Thank you. Um, no more public comment. We'll go ahead and close public comment then. Um, my two cents on this is that it, it, I, I know, what's that? Oh. I know Mission Vineyard Road well, um, and, and it is a series of one acre parcels uh, throughout there, um, and that that is a large, I know a big chunk of that property, If correct me if I'm wrong, it's on a, it's, there's a somewhat of a substantial hill in the middle of it. Yeah, and there is a hillside ordinance in the in the county, so they're not going to be able to put a house at the top of that hill. Um, it's a it, it's my only like I said earlier, I was upset with the fact that the county never relayed to the applicant that there is some type of stipulation because he's a, he's in the sphere of influence that they're going to be kind of guided towards using our sewer system, and that's a. That's unfortunate that that didn't come out earlier, and, and thank you for finding that for everybody. I mean, it's, I could imagine the sticker shock, <laughs> you know, at the last minute. So, um, I don't, I don't have a problem with it, to be perfectly honest with you. I really don't. It's, it seems like a clean project, and, um, and, and it's a, a reputable great. family that's been here for, you know, centuries, you know, a century, um, it's not like, and they, and they haven't destroyed that property, they actually have made it look much nicer than it was. Um, I remember when the Songrofs lived there, mainly because there's a couple sisters that lived there, and they were always nice to look at, but anyway. Um, yeah. well, if, if I can add one more comment, um, it's 
I feel, it's, I feel it's important that this isn't something that we're just doing to make a buck on it and leave. If we, this was a bad project, we would be leaving. I mean, the idea to do this is because we're trying to enhance the neighborhood. My dad lives there and I live half a mile down the road. I mean, why would we want to do something that would pull the value or deteriorate from the local aspect? I mean, from playing Little League Baseball here to riding our bikes to the mission to pick blackberries and get donuts. I mean, I'm not going to do that to a town that I love and want to stay in. So, I mean, the idea of showing up in a Mercedes and loafers and leaving, you know, is, is not on our agenda. Um, so, I mean, I would love to see this evolve into a, a situation where some nice uh, places can be had and maybe some families can experience the same uh, kind of upbringing that, you know, my sisters and I have here. And I think that's important that good, good opportunities like that aren't overlooked because of some bad uh, tastes because of some other projects that haven't worked out so well or aren't as tasteful or are done as well. That's just kind of my thought on my way down here. Thank you. Is there something we can do to kind of start a little conversation with the county? Obviously, the county's had this for a while, and I really think they should give us some. They need to give us a little bit of room on this one. This is kind of ridiculous that they dumped it on us this soon, and all the next thing we know, they're giving us an ultimatum on when we need to get a comment back to them. Um, is there something we can do to put some type of language in there saying that, you know, maybe there's some way that the county can work with these folks with doing. I mean, septic systems out there are, the whole area is septic systems. So why would this be any different? Um, it's not in the, it's not in the, the if we look at the, you know, the, the influence of the, the watershed, that's one thing I started looking at, and then I started looking at the maps, and it's, I really don't think it's going to affect <coughs> our watershed. Um, let me just go and take a shot and see if I can do it. Uh, that's the point of like the memo that I want to write is this uh, information that the concerns and our input back to the county jurisdiction. The good news was when I talked to the senior planner over there, they're willing to give us like you know extra room that we need. So I can you know definitely respond to city staff and planning commission and public testimony comments. And then you know earlier you mentioned uh, earlier that you know can we take this to council? And you know, my recommendation is actually, you know, it's not a bad idea. Let's do it. So that way, this thing is fully vetted. Mm -hmm. And so, anyway, in City Council, it's today's July second. Next City Council meeting is on July sixteenth. So we can definitely let them know that we'd like to take this to council for further review, and and uh, and so forth. So, but also we can state the the you know the you know connections. You know, those are concerns for us, and as well as like. You know, like with the the rural character out there. Yeah, well. it's, it, it definitely would be an impact on our sewer system. That's for sure. If it, um, the water system, there's already established water system that we have out there. It's been out there for for I don't know, for since we were kids. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't want to drag this on too much because you know diesel prices just went up another five cents a gallon this week. So you know, the longer we drag it out, the more it's going to cost them in the future. But I'm also asking the city, us, to reach out to the county to expedite this thing in a positive way. I mean, I'm not saying anything here that would slow it down or prevent it from happening. But I want to be able to be it within the sphere of influence that we can help anybody who wants to do this that will be beneficial to the developers or developing and the city, that's all I'm looking for. And I think there needs to be more with the uh, county versus the city. We need to have a better dialogue there and some understanding. Uh, and I don't, I'm not against the project either, but I, I think the county and the city needs to come together much closer on, on a situation like this because it's within the, uh, within the sphere. I just don't see it. It sounds like the county's having some yeah. Definitely growing well, pains, that's for sure. Well, um, we're here to help. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, you know, here we go. <laughs> kind of get a crux of what we're feeling here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think so, yeah. And then maybe yeah. we can take a look at like a draft or something and yeah. Okay. Before it goes out, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know. Do, do any of us think this is a terrible project? No. You know, as a general rule, I, a property owner, 
in my mind, having sold real estate, has a right to do with their property as long as it, you know, doesn't isn't detrimental to um, to the rest of the area or whatever. And I'm just g giving some thought to what uh, Valerie and, and uh, Darlene said. And instead of looking at this in and of itself, is to take a look at this area it, it, and see if this is basically the way we want to go. So I mean, I have no objection. You know, to this, but I, I'd like to to see that we don't forget what's going on in the rest uh, around us. Yeah, I was aware as well when I looked the yeah. the first time the the proposal. I was like, oh, again, a kind of uh, you know another subdivision. And I, but I, when I listened to the the owner, I said, okay, I, I changed my mind. I really changed my mind. So I, I saw it's a family project, it's a local project. He's, uh, as he says, not uh, a guy who's gonna take the money and we build and take the money and uh, we run away. I think it, I support, I, I like this project. Awesome. Good to go. Okay. Awesome. Uh, great. So you get I think general so. idea, so yeah. It's, a, it's sort of like uh, the way I have it in my notes here. There's general like overall support of it, but just make it sure that the county understands that look at this project from the bigger context of what's, you know, from our general plan and their general plan <coughs> together and making sure that dialogue is there. Yeah. So and, and the fact that it's gonna yeah. be an impact on two parties as far as the sewer system. Yeah. It'll be an impact on us and it'll be a major <laughs> impact on them. Yeah. Um, and you know nobody deserves to get a a, a bill like that. I mean there, right. there is no they would have to run sewage line all the way to from Mission Vineyard down Salinas Road to Alameda. Maybe pump it. Mm -hmm. So it'd be that less distance just to hook up to Sewer and Hollister. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. We'll okay. be we'll be a lot closer. <laughs> okay, great. Let's uh, we'll move on. You good, Todd? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, move on to seven uh, B proposed noise ordinance for the hours. Of construction activity. Okay, Mr. Kennedy, do you have something on that? Yes, I do. Thank you, um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, this item I wanted to go ahead and put it on as a discussion item because it's kind of an old case, and now it's back before us, and it's in response to some construction activity that's been happening here within town. It's been brought to our attention from a constituent here in town. Uh, about a past resolution that was passed by Planning Commission, but it didn't make it to council. And it was about noise. It was about whether it be construction or entertainment, uh, or, or, you know, so the, the, that was what the noise ordinance or the noise resolution intended to cover at that time. But I wanted to bring it back because resolution 2016-17 uh, was passed by Planning Commission on April 5th, 2016. However, it did not make it to, uh, it made it to, let me back up, it made it to city council. City council kind of punted it and then punted it back to the city attorney and city staff for further review, but it, it's, it stalled out. It didn't go anything further. And that was as of, from what I can tell based on the minutes, May 17th, 2016. And it sat dormant. Now it's back. And I wanted to ask the Planning Commission and the public that is this something worth, um, you know, do we want to restart this? Do we want to look at cod codifying something? So we have a noise ordinance uh, on the record for construction activity, for noise, uh, for entertainment, and, and, and other uses like that. So that's pretty much my briefing I just wanted to bring up. It's interesting, I couldn't find a signed copy of Resolution 2016-17, the minutes told me that it was passed. So that's where we So stand. we don't even have the the verbiage on it on what was passed. Do we do you have can you read the ordinance? Yeah. Do you have the ordinance? Let's see. I have the resolution and I include it in your packets. Packet. I did include it in your packets along with the minutes. And that resolution does have the uh, oh, the yeah. language. Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, let's see how many pages. It's about a seven page document right. here mm -hmm. and uh, interior noise let's see, I didn't Chance to go through percent. I was asking so everybody could hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, daytime uh, hours would be to between 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Noise is it? Yeah. yeah, nighttime would be between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. 
those are what would be the, uh, the, the, the daytime hours. And um, mm -hmm. based on the, the following table. But yeah, it's a seven page document that I included in your packets. And this is just to kind of bring it back as a discussion item if we wish to agendaize this and either do further discussion or, um, you know, even make an action item out of it. You know, because I just thought I'd go back to Planning Commission because that's where it kind of left off at. Do we know why they kicked it back, the City Council kicked it back to Planning? From what I have in the minutes, I'm going to go ahead and I'll take a look here and I'll just read it off. Um, okay. Minutes uh, from City Council regular meeting, May 17, 2016. Okay, item B. The item, uh, it's a consider adopting an ordinance adding section 11-04 of the Municipal Code dealing with noise. This item was continued to a future uh, meeting so the Planning Commission can review and approve enhancements provided by the City Attorney. And that's the last, uh, last action there was. So, oh, okay. And I couldn't find any further action after that. So, um, so all the updates were done, or uh, no, no, sir. No. I we don't know what they are. Right. What's your recommendation? You know, uh, let's see. I think at this point, my initial recommendation, and it is subject to change. Uh, since we don't have a noise ordinance and uh, we've actually been using conditions of approval for construction, Rancho Vista project being one of them, and as well as uh, several uh, restaurants here in town, we've been mm -hmm. using like individual. I would say it's actually a pretty good idea to go ahead and do an overall noise ordinance for the city as a whole. You know, it, it's uh, that way we have something in on the records. At least that would be it. That's my initial call. Oh. Chair, Chair, if I could I know, have a few I thoughts this. of my own. This is a brand new sure. issue to me. Um, most general plans that I'm aware of have a noise element in them that give guidance for this kind of policy, and this would be an implementation policy. Um, and it's common. Um, most cities have, have noise ordinances, especially during special events um, and, and live entertainment, that kind of thing. Um, construction is an obvious thing that, that needs to be controlled. Um, I would want the city attorney to review it for sure. Um, the one thing that jumped off the page at me was um, no construction on Sundays or holidays. And I know some private developers who would just, you know what, do it anyway. Um, and so, so I want to make sure that it's enforceable as well as, as uh, uh, has a strong basis in law. So we could possibly do research of other cities and our own general plan and come back with something for you to consider. Good. May I add a comment on yeah. the noise? So let's not forget about propane cannons. Uh, we've been hearing those go off. That oh, that's right. The they cannons? Are, uh, those are in the those are in the Our county. Track, I don't know since we're in Vineyard, we're not in the city, but we've had tractors at 3 a.m. fire up across the street and go for like two hours. That's hot. We were just hoping we don't hear conditioning and you we'll, can't sleep. We'll get, can we can't. Can Time out real quick. We can uh, you can do a public comment in a, yeah, in a second. We're, we're gonna okay. sure. still get the, kind of the, the crux of this, and then if you'd like to stand up, please okay. feel free. Um, oh. Just kind of trying to wrap our heads around <coughs> this because it's seven pages of yeah. legalese. Um, so, <laughs> so it sounded like last time it went to the city attorney and never got back. So can we put like a Reach on this thing, so it can, it. can we have like a time frame? Comes to and comes back. Like, so we can have like um, how we set up like an alarm for the pain of the um, you know that planning thing for the make sure we have like a time frame and stick to the state to that. Mm -hmm. So that for the attorney to give it back to us. Oh like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I see what you're getting at. So sorry. just because mm -hmm. it's been there and still not back right since 2016. Yeah. Yeah, I hope we're not billing that person. And, and I, I hope they're not billing that. Yeah. Well, actually, I did check in with the city attorney on this, and I asked uh, what she recalled on this, and she actually had no information, no recollection on this. Mm -hmm. So it sounded like it, you know, for, that indicates to me that he never got to the city attorney, yeah. you know, from the staff at that time. Because remember, this was May of 2016, and, you know, I, yeah. I, I'm yeah. not sure on the, on the staff or ever I got to I thought it was a her. done deal. And she doesn't sit in on the meetings, so. Yeah. 
can solve it. Um, this, this actually is a, it's, it's funny that this has showed up because I had three phone calls this week about noise, about music and then um, a couple other things. Yeah. Um, and then I saw this and went, oh boy. Okay, yeah, it's, it's a good idea. Um, what about Hardinas and the, the, um, uh, the cross the street, I can't remember, the Owls? The Owls. They've had this till 11 o'clock. Are we going to address well, that, them? That would be. Yeah, I know. That, yeah, but yes. we need some teeth. Yeah. Right. Right now we're, we have no teeth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant about individual projects, whether it be like Hardeen's or Rancho mm -hmm. Vista or others, right there. Like Rancho Vista has conditions of approval that's stated, and that's for individual projects. And it's just one more thing that we have to look after, as, yeah. as opposed to a whole ordinance sure. that covers us citywide. Which is probably just confusing as heck for some outfits like them when they normally come into a city. They, you know, here's our noise ordinance and, you know, it's X, Y, Z. And then they show up and they say, and we say, well, we kind of have a noise ordinance, but we need to have a little sit down. You know, it, it's confusing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if it's, you know, it's black and white, it's going to be pretty easy now. Um, yeah. We do have code enforcement yeah. in town. So, do we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he's good at his job. So, um, yeah, can we get the, Mr. Reynolds, couldn't we get the, uh, the attorney to? Absolutely, that would, that, would, that would be my recommendation. That would give us more time. Todd and I could look at it together. It'd be great. Do you want to so, see strikeouts or anything like that? <laughs> No, just go yeah, ahead and just uh, bring it back to us so that we can right. say right. if you, what, whatever you want from us. To, to make a, a motion on anything or uh, decide as to what we can do to help you with that, fine. But, uh, you know, maybe we need to review it and, you know, get, uh, get, uh, put it on the agenda, yada, yada, when it's ready. Yeah. Anything else? And then we can vote on it. Within that certain time frame. 30 days. Yeah. 30 days. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. At least an update. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. By the next oh, would you like to Well, I, I don't know if we would even be that are under that because we are a mission vineyard so we're obviously in county oh. but i don't i don't even know if there's any ordinance against farming at 3 a.m firing up these tractors with lights i mean i'm kind of surprised that's probably not it's something i've been i i'm used to it i've been listening to it for 53 years oh, so, really? so that's <laughs> yeah. never, to me it's like, kind of music to my ears oh, it's perfect for, 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 for years <laughs> and we've never had them go out like in the middle of the night full on to yeah start. I've made some phone calls to the supervisors for the county, and they were very helpful. Okay, so that's yeah. why we need to talk to. Yep. I mean, it's only happened a couple times. Yeah. And it's be a let them know. Let let them know where you're coming from and what's going on, and they, I'm sure they'll be happy to help you. Okay. And whatever you learn, bring it back to okay. us so okay. we can help you uh, sustain that. Okay. Yeah. I'm just yeah. curious about the, the, that. As far as the propane cannons, that's a lot of um, the organic farmers use it instead of. Pesticides right. and it's supposed to keep the turkeys and the pigs out of their fields, but every time you drive out Old Town Highway, it's just <laughs> fields are full of turkeys and pigs around the cannons. <laughs> around the cannons, <laughs> yeah, hanging out by the cannons. So, so I think they get used to the sound after a while. But, yeah. Um, yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good job, folks. Yep. Yes, sir. Okay, everybody good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is why I get up in the morning now. 7C, update on the housing element. Okay. Mr. Chair, I'll give you a quick staff report. Yeah. Okay. All right. Painless staff report. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to give, uh, as with the last meeting, I just want to give you an update. I uh, just want to do this uh, just to kind of keep everyone informed uh, and, you know, just to let everyone know where we are at. Um, anyway, uh, First off, the, uh, the first five tasks have been completed that were outlined in the contract uh, initially by EMC Planning Group. Um, so the, um, the comments uh, from, the, um, uh, from the state were issued on June 7th, right on time, and I want to include that in your packet so that way you can see what the state wrote. And EMC obviously got, up, got a copy of that. And they've been working on that and addressing those comments. Um, the tribal consultation, Native American tribal consultation, that period expired back on June 17th, but before that date was up, there was an inquiry issued from the Amamutsun tribe. So as direction uh, from city staff to EMC is to basically move forward with consultation. 
As far as I know from right now, they have been, they've reached out, made contact, but there hasn't been any follow-up from the tribe um, as of when I, last time I checked with them, which was just last week. Uh, there are a couple of people out on vacation right now, but they should be back this next week and we'll be able to reconvene right now at this point. Um, the, the one thing I will say, a draft housing element should be before Planning Commission and we're shooting for August 6th. So we'll uh, have that, we should have that hopefully on the agenda by that time so that way we can all review and take a look. And uh, EMC Planning Group will be here present and be able to present it to us. So that's all I have um, right now at this point. Questions? David? Mm -mm. Good. No, I'm good. Um, this is going to be pretty lengthy. In depth. Yes. Yeah. What would you think about a like a workshop on it? Yeah. I like that. Yeah, like Jendai's workshop we can actually <coughs> Well, the the other idea, actually, I'm sorry, did oh, I interrupt you? Yeah, that that would, yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, you're probably going to answer my question. I was I was actually floating or thinking about the idea today. How about a special meeting, perhaps? Because I think to you know for that one to be another item on the agenda, it will probably be here late. So maybe to have a special meeting that everyone can meet on exclusively on this item might actually be worthwhile. Yeah. It's just a thought because. When we look at August six, and good. today is July second, right. and you know the uh, and I you know I want to be mindful. I'm trying to you know be balanced. I want to be mindful of EMC's um, time as well because they're pretty swamped. You know they have clients to lure all throughout the state, and so you know I want to give them the time they need so they could do a thorough job as well. And you know they were concerned about the time frame because after they get the housing element to us and we go through it and do it as staff to vet it through, make comments, and we give it back to them, and they have to draft it all up and get it all prepped for commission. You know the timing was sort of like that's going to be tight for us, but we'll try to do it. Well, I want to be mindful of that, you know, and no, that that's makes sense. And that's why I'm thinking maybe a special meeting where we focus in a workshop like you were saying might be a good idea. Pub does, public meeting, right? What is the final, final, final sign draft? Shipped off to the state. Do you have a ballpark figure? On Let's that? see. Let Let's me go. Schedule. Let's see. Let me get my schedule out real quick. I can probably let you. In, in addition to Todd's concern, I think you're going to need more than five days to read this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just, just saying. You know. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> see. Um, what I'm going to say is the CEQA documentation. We're anticipating. I would say for the 2015, 2019, the four-year cycle, uh, we're at, I would say ballpark once again September this year, and then the next fourth cycle or four-year cycle of the fifth cycle. Um, you know the words are kind of all over, all over the place. Sorry about that. Um, that is anticipated to be done and complete, and we are in compliance by the end of this year, by December cool. of this year. And that would put us back on the eight year cycle with the fifth, uh, the, the fifth cycle complete and we are uh, set until 2023. And at 2023 is when the sixth cycle begins. So anyway, roughly in that time frame. Just in time to pass it off to the next guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it just in case, but you're not sure what this time, what time we're, we got a little behind on um, on the <coughs> housing element by about four years. Yeah. yeah, and then the state got a little bit upset with us. And Dave can attest to this as the San Juan boy. We really don't care if the state's mad at us, but you know, I guess we have to play ball with them. So um, we're gonna have to read a lot. It's good. Oh, yeah. I will say uh, it's. Um, you know, in addition to that, it is uh, definitely beneficial, you know, for the leverage that we have over housing development and all that yeah. to make sure that we have a housing element that's completely up to speed. I, and also, furthermore, the State uh, Department of Housing and Community Development has actually been very easy to work with, Good. very responsive. Um, I've Every time I put in a call, they always respond to me within a 24-hour period, and um, I've spoken to them quite a bit now since I've been on this project. So I think they understand that we're on the right track. So can you just can you read it and record it and just we can listen to your audio tape. I have a lot of energy, Todd. No doubt you can get through that thing. Or Laura, it's a thick document. What I'm saying about this big. Oh boy. Okay. Okay. I can see falling asleep to that. Okay. And we're gonna get this to us so that we can start reading this. 
Let's see. I would say, you know what? Um, like, like I said, next month or so. You, you know, we're anticipating, but um, you know, I'll, I'll try and shoot for the end of July. But I would say, you know, yeah. probably in, in August. But let's let's because uh, I'd like to propose the idea about a special meeting, you know, or a workshop. Mm -hmm. you know, we kind of go through this multiple times. I'd like, you know, for the consultant EMC to be here as well because mm -hmm. they can definitely elaborate on a lot more than I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're going to read through this thing, and we're not going to really. I mean, we're going to we're going to read it, and I'm sure we're going to ingest a whole bunch of it. But it's there's, I'm sure there are bullet points or specific yeah. parts of it that we're really going to know need to know about mm -hmm. coming down the future. You know, and we don't want to all be standing here with egg on our face in the future. Mm -hmm. um, okay. No cliff notes. Dave. Yeah. Read the whole thing. Yeah. Got it. Does this have to be done in, with a public setting if we do a workshop? Yeah, I believe yeah. it does. Just for yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. And that's when because I know members of the public have asked about when we're gonna see this and that's the time for them to see it. So yeah. Luckily somebody wants to see it. <laughs> okay. Are we good with that one? We can move on to D report from the planner on current upcoming uh, upcoming projects. Can you break out your Horse blanket. <laughs> <laughs> and her it's a good horse blanket. Thank you. Glasses. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, actually, uh, members of the commission, um, pretty much, I think, um, and I'll try and be as. Uh, I know my energy is up. I think I had a little too much sugar before tonight's <laughs> meeting, I think. Um, I had a dollar for every time you said you had too much coffee or too much sugar, I'd be so rich. <laughs> Um, let's see. I um, the change for chocolate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's see. Uh, the Fault Line Restaurant. They are currently under construction right now for the garage. That's underway right now. So um, also, there's one project in particular that I'll be adding onto this list, and it does involve downtown. Mom and Pops. Uh, there is a new tenant in town. It's interested in occupying it. They have turned in their minor historic alteration application to me just yesterday. And uh, I'll, I'll try to put it on the August 6th agenda. In that minor alteration application will consist of a series of, uh, of projects that include front changes to the paint, new sign, and interior changes that include rebuilding the bar table. And also, I think some other changes as well, like I think removing the bandstand, I, and I'd like to include that as whole part of their plans. Uh, there have been some, you know, calls and inquiries that I, that I received, you know, from members of the community about what was happening in there. We did put a stop to that, and we we do have, you know, we're watching them now, you know, because there was a few things that either got ahead of them, either one department said, you know, for whether between the city and the county said they could whether you know the city department are saying no 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 you need further permits and all so but we kind of make sure I think we're on the same page I talked to the county yesterday that you know please hold off until the city review process gets done and, and after they can get a, a proper certificate of occupancy so anyway but the good news is it will fill a t um, it'll be a tenant improvement Sorry, Scott. I'm still laughing at me and my energy and what I must look like. Um, so, um, so anyway, I'm just going to wrap it all up, and we should be able to see that on August 6. And you said removal of the stage or uh, removal of the bandstand. From what the applicant told me, yeah, uh, it, it's not clear whether or not she wants to replace it. But it's over in that corner when you first walk in the door. Yeah, it's on the left. It's yeah. uh, it's right up in there. Have you you've been in there? Yes, I have. <laughs> I walked Heavy inside and uh, took. How about how about the floors and everything? There, that actually did not require a permit. That was one change they did not do, and that was repair. There was a big hole in the floor that had to be done, like a big divot, and they actually filled that in. Huh? When I walked in there, I saw them building in there, and I talked to the building official. That did not require a permit, but replacing the <laughs> bar table does require permits. So interesting. And on that. And on that uh, I think we're going to split hairs on this stage or, or bandstand. The fire marshal may need to know about that one because probably if you do something like that, I know there's something that has to do with sprinklers. Oh, he knows like about that. it. Okay. He knows about it. I've been emailing him right and left. And so you can tell him I appreciate him being on this stuff because he's he's really he's he's been great to work with, and I've called him on a couple of things, and and he's um, 
he's doing a good job for us. I appreciate it. Yeah, anytime when it requires like a tenant improvement and it's like special vacant building, the building official and the fire marshal are like the two main contacts. Perfect. So they know about this. Questions? Um, the Loaiza property. Yes. Uh, it's residential now, isn't it? That, that the road, along the road there in front, across the street from uh, Rancho Vista, yes. right? Yes. That's all R1 now. That it has been our way. Right. And been. the only reason why they have a cyclone fence is because of agriculture. Now that it's residential, do the, do they have to keep I that? Think per, I think it's always been residential. No, it hasn't. It's, yeah. It was agricultural, and then we made it just recently R1. Well, with the general plan update. But the only reason why they have a cyclone fence there is because the only way you can put a cyclone fence if it's agricultural. And now that it's residential, why is that cyclone fence still there? Circle. 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 Circle, David. Circle, David. Well, the circle I, of truth, David. You're I'm here. A, I, okay, I, I, I'll take myself out of here and come in as a citizen. That's, that's the way you'll have to do it. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, that's just, well, I mean, it's on the agenda. We, these are all on the agenda. Yeah. Well, so my question to is to you that. You have every right to speak at, at the podium. Yeah. So well, I'm not anyway, that it, it's just yeah. it's just an interesting thought because we, we're 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 sticking to the general plan. <coughs> we're trying to do the right thing for the city. Yeah. It's a walkable city. It's a small town. We want to keep the the small town atmosphere here, and we've built Rancho Vista, and it's a beautiful development, and they're doing all the right things, and we would like to see the adjoining properties to do the same that's it you know and I'm uh, uh, it's just something that came up and uh, uh, because at the time there were several attempts to put cyclone fences all around that property there yeah you know. let's see when I when I hear the word I just want to make sure I'm understanding cyclone cyclone like uh, a storm link, uh, uh, chain link fence chain link, chain link oh fence. chain link chain fence yeah. okay. it's another word of saying all right Thanks. <laughs> so this is the property that was subdivided at the last June this board meeting? Is, right. It's been no, it's one, but we just wanted to yeah. parcel it out. That was the only yeah. thing. Anyway, this yeah. is, yes, if I had any questions. Yeah, you know better. <laughs> <laughs> questions? <laughs> anything? Anybody? Uh, Midnight Express. Their <clears throat> temporary use permit. Did it expire? It expired, and they renew, and they and they put in an application for renewal. And uh, we, uh, we still, that's still pending. Uh, I sent over their application, you know, material to, you know, the, the building official and the fire marshal, because there have been con some concerns. They want to include their temporary loading dock out there. And uh, we're awaiting, I sent, um, I looked over their, uh, their plans for the building itself, you know, the 5,000 square foot building. And uh, it, uh, indicated on there is an image of the temporary loading dock and I asked our city engineer if this is sufficient for what what it needs he came back to me with a list of bullet points that include you know you know with different specs and so forth so I sent that over to our building of uh, our building division to see if that's sufficient enough you know at this time so anyway I'm still waiting word on that we're making sure we give this thing a thorough review before we say yay or nay to this okay so if their per, if their current permit is expired, yeah, um, they applied right on the date that it expired. Date. Okay. Yeah, and have that kind of gives them some time until we make a decision. But have you know, they rectified their issues with fishing game? Yes, that's a good question. Okay. And as far as I know, I'm not sure if they have or not. Uh, and I'd like to follow up with fishing game maybe tomorrow and just ask them, which you know, uh, you know, the kind of the level of sequence. You know, with you know, fishing game. Would you feel more comfortable having you know your issues for, uh, fixed before we make a decision, or do you feel comfortable with us making a decision? Yeah, it's it's a little concerning because I mean, it it showed it clearly showed on the plan construction zone the limitations where they could go. I mean, this was, this was clear. They knew about it. They said in their secret docket it's not going to affect anything, and then they went and did it. They damaged their riparian area, so it's a big deal. So I just I, I'm a little concerned about their morals yes. on this issue. So 
I, I see you're on it, though. I'm sure it's yeah. entertaining. Yeah. Entertaining. Um, well, as, as far as the fault line goes, I, um, if anybody gets a chance, go walk to the top of Franklin and walk down be behind it. They, it looks wonderful. They've done great landscaping. Mm -hmm. They've cleaned it all out. Mm -hmm. They have some nice plants in there. It mm -hmm. looks wonderful. It looks like it did 35 years ago. It really looks <coughs> nice. It's, 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 it's come along. Um, keep our fingers crossed they can you know, pull yeah. off a restaurant there. It's going to be great. I'm about to his with that midnight express. They already disregard for the um, fishing game. They're doing um, that uh, temporary dock. I mean, I'm on board with what he says. They just have disregard to what was in the initial realms of their well, business. They, they pulled a fast one on on a former city manager in the in the verbiage conduct business, conducting their business, so to speak. You know and Apparently, you know, a million BTUs of pallets stacked yeah. them as part of their business. So it just kind of irks me because we approved a um, a produce transfer station. Oh, that's what. Yeah. Not what they have up there. Yeah. Maybe we should go back to enforce that it should be a produce, or can we? I, I don't. That's a good question. I don't can see we why. just we make them approve the pallet yard? Yeah, we can we? The produce station. You know, see, this is the thing, and uh, that's the problem. This thing has kind of been, you know, you know, all across the board since Planning Commission March of 2018 has approved this. And um, so, anyway, sorry, just want to pick that up right there. Um, so, yeah, it was approved in March of 2018 by Planning Commission for a 15,000 square foot building. Or just uh, just under that, and um, you know, CEQA document was all done with it, and all they need to do is move forward with building permits. But then they, uh, the statement that I got from them is, is that they're running into basically financial, you know, situations and all that. I mean, I don't want to get into too much detail and all because you know it's basically you know, you know, information that was just given to staff and only just very preliminary information. But uh, to save money is that they wanted to go instead of uh, 15,000 to start off with a 5,000 square foot building and do it in phases and gradually work up to what was approved by Planning Commission. But to start off even before that is to do something temporary like you know put their you know their trucks and their pallets on and their equipment on site, non buildable, non non structural type stuff in those areas and just start off so they can at least start making money mm -hmm. to make ends meet and then have the funds to go ahead and start construction. So that's where they are. So they were approved at 15,000 square foot, they scaled it back to 5,000 and now they even scaled it back even further to have temporary equipment on site. Mm -hmm. You know, trucks and trailers uh, for, you know, for produce and a temporary loading dock. So anyway, that's why we're, you know. But there is city regulations that we can adhere to and make them adhere to, can't we? Well, in, in the conditions I mean, of approval. I one, mean. Yeah. It, but, there, but there is one thing, though, that, you know, that, that has been agreed upon, and that is the deferment uh, that was approved by city council of roadway improvements, you know, the, the roadway improvements. That was done. But we need a signature from them before we do anything. So. <coughs> I have a hard time seeing that happening. When, yeah. I mean, they've already knocked down their building two thirds, and it just—it's becoming a little uncomfortable. I'm, I'm getting a little uncomfortable with this because I feel like we were lied to and disregarded. Excuse yeah. me. Uh, and I thought we were very gracious to actually, as bad as their plans were, and as bad as the application was, with no, it was a mess. And we were actually very cordial with them, as opposed to sending them back and saying, you need to do this application again and get it right. You need to get your plans correct. They gave us the wrong plans. You need to get all this. We were actually pretty cordial with them. And then, so I guess they mistook our kindness as weakness. And that irks me. Um, yep. And there was a lot of people that weren't in favor of that, but it was really difficult to to find against it because it's zoned commercial. Or industrial. Or industrial, yeah. yeah. So that's the way it was zoned. So, I mean, it, it's, it was difficult for us to say, no, this can't happen. Um, but now it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, 
It's a blight. Well, it's something we need to, I think it's something we need to think about when we have another project as yes, such, to make sure to. that we get the language of what is going to be done, you know, before we give a, uh, allow the permit to be uh, approved, is to make sure we know exactly what's going to go in there and what, what it's going to be used for. Yeah. Well, we and, it, and it has to be uh, in the documents. And we did, but then yeah. they pulled an in well, on the Well, if that's the case, then we need to... Re we need to uh, point that out to them. Yeah. True. If, it, if it's there. I mean, you're not going to put something in. Yeah. yeah. What, do we have, what do we have documented and they've agreed on that we can go forward with to make sure that we're in compliance when it comes to meeting what the requirements are to have that business there? What is it? Do we have all the right verbiage, language? And then go forward with it. If, it. if it's not in there, then we got to make sure that we put that in there next time uh, to, well, prevent, renewing their contract. to prevent the confusion. Yeah. If we, there's maybe now be. that they're renewing their, temp yeah. their permit, can we like say, wait a minute, let's... That's, that's pretty much why I'm doing this. Yeah, that's we need pretty to re renegotiate it because yeah. um, like, um, I, I, I don't feel comfortable with what they're doing, like he says. Scott, okay. you know, it's, I, I'm just still worried about the fishing game if they even clean that up mm -hmm. and temporary structures. And I'm really surprised fishing games being as nice as they seem to be. Um, anything else on the? What about the roundabout? Where's that at coming out? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I wasn't going to ask. I, I, you know, I'm going to always ask that. I mean, Lowenzas gave them the land. The, mm -hmm. Where we're at with that. Well, the subdivision has, you know, been approved, and it's right now being reviewed by our city engineering staff, mm -hmm. and uh, so it has to be recorded first, and that will give us the land to the right of way, and then construction on the roundabout can begin right soon after. Okay. So right now it's being worked on by our city engineering staff. I've been working with them because there seems to be some discussion, and this is subdivision map act stuff, mm -hmm. which is where you know engineering gets into it. Um, I did have a conversation with our new city engineering uh, contract, um, CVS? CSG. CSG, yeah. We just started today as well. <laughs> right, right. And I, I did ask our, um, our new contract city engineer that if, you know, what's the deal with this? Because I'm told one story, then I'm told another one. And what it includes, okay, a minor subdivision, we're talking about a tentative map, and then we're talking about improvement plans you know, for that, well, there's nothing being developed on there. So what are the improvement plans supposed to consist of? So that's the whole thing where we're running up. After talking with our city engineer on the new firm, they were saying, actually, this doesn't look like it needs improvement plans because it's a minor subdivision. So anyway, I gave her the information, and she liked to check in to see if the subdivision map act is in our favor on this. So that's where we're, where we're at on and this. That's, so just so folks know, that, look, do you have the definition between a roundabout any traffic circle. Do we? Or I mean, is that yeah. something? I mean, they both get thrown around a lot, and, yeah. and people seem to freak out yeah. when you say roundabout, but you say traffic circle, and people don't freak out, which is beyond me. <laughs> let's call it a traffic circle. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. But with let's that, with, with the folks, um, how do you pronounce your name? Um, Oeza. Oeza. Yeah. They're, and now they're cooperating with. Yes, they agreed to give that. And everything's That's right. Looking good, so now they just need to <coughs> get, get it all get it, properly recorded. Yeah, let's just get it done. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think you were here when I had to. Had to just, oh, I knew I had to, yeah, I had to sit down on that one. Not the traffic circuit, the other one. Um, uh, I was looking at Harvey's lockup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like something was supposed to take place at the end of this year. Okay. Next deadline they have is the end of this year. And that's the. Are they going to? We're talking like smoke poles and alarms. Or are you talking? It's like I think the sprink, full sprinkler. I think it's like the smoke alarm system. Yeah. Uh, I think full sprinkler is supposed to be done by the end of 2020 based on the agreement. Okay. I can double check on that though. Okay. Let me uh, make a note. We got half of the sprinkler. Half of it has sprinklers. From what I, or the last time the agreement came around, they had half of it sprinklered, I believe. I believe, you know, without looking at the agreement in front of me in the last correspondence. 
Um, but the, uh, the thing is, that I think it's supposed to be fully alarmed and smoke detected by the end of this year, 2019, and then full sprinkler by 2020. We have 52819 five, to meet the entire agreement by 52819. What's we have on here on Harry's Oh, and your, under your comments. Yeah, under your minute. comments, 52819. That's when you said that. Let's see, hold on a second. Well, that's that was my last date that uh, that I updated. Oh, this on. okay. Yeah, that I updated. This Progress on. is being updated. Yeah. Okay. yeah. When I put those dates in parentheses, that was the last time I put a comment into the box. Okay. So. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. Well, okay. That makes sense. Like for instance, Copper Leaf. I the last time I put comments in there was okay. uh, on the nineteenth of June. Okay. Okay. The gas station that is approved from the court cited on the project. Yes. And where are we? Are they going to start on that? What's going on? Uh, right now, they are getting ready to submit building permit plans. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so hopefully, uh, pretty soon. But I understand they wanted to do one submittal ahead of the other, and the building official was like, "No, no, no, you can't do that." Or at least that's based on the last conversation. <coughs> they have to put in a. They have to put in a, right. a lane. Desal yeah. lane. De they have to lane. do that. I believe so, yeah. Right, and they're designing it. We had a conversation with them, a meeting with them, um, June 20, I believe, in this, in this room. How are they going to be able to put that? I know. It seems like it's awfully tight. Are they? Yeah. Um, there was a conversation. That's a good question, um, Chair um, Friels. Um, the conversation was around the cost of that, and they didn't seem to see a need to move uh, one of the traffic light poles. But if you're standing on that, on that, uh, Northwestern, whatever corner that is, it's darn near in the center. And so that's going to cost a lot to move that pole and hmm. be time consuming. So that was a stumbling block. The developer was admittedly going to Cabo San Lucas, and I was <laughs> to meet with him when he came back. So next week, uh, we should continue that conversation. But the focus is on that on that lane and, and how much will it cost and set it, getting that done. They're very concerned about Caltrans holding up their whole project. And plans need to be submitted to Caltrans for approval, of course. And it, they, they, have to per, they have to purchase that land from the state? No, no. Uh, they're, they're improving Caltrans right away. Okay. So they're designing improvements for Caltrans on their right away. On behalf of the city, if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that whole intersection doesn't make sense. No. It's, yeah. It's a, it's it's a city uh, jurisdiction on a state highway. Mm -hmm. you know, with, it's, with the Copper Leaf Project going in and the school across the street, it should be great to have two crosswalks there and have it fully signalized. But that's another topic. And the speed limit. And the speed limit. Yeah. And the noise. And it's terrible. You can't call them Jake brakes. you got to call them compression brakes. Oh, yeah. That's how you get to the pass. Yeah. <laughs> compression brakes. You call them Jake brakes. You can't call it a, uh, you know, a Whatever you call them, you freak out. manufactured name, yeah. <laughs> you freak well, out. Well, they, you know, the Caltrans does. Yeah. Anything else on the current upcoming projects? Okay. 7E, report from the subcommittee to separate the Planning Commission from the Historic Resource Board. Who gets to tackle this one? Uh, you want to start, Shirley? Or sure. Here's a copy of the report. Do we have, if anybody needs it in the audience, do we have? Uh, uh, no, uh, I, I just assume share it with us right now. Well, because it's, it's a draft, it has to be. It has to be. And it'll be public. It'll be no, public it has record. To be tonight, so if anybody, oh, okay. needs a, if anybody needs a copy of this, yes, we have a few I'm extras. Good. Okay. Yeah. I didn't think we we're going to get that heavy on it, but anyway, uh, we did. Report. We did. Yes. Thank you for reminding us. I appreciate it. Uh, so Shirley, I, do you want? Okay. Oh, you want me to go ahead? Yeah. We we've met. Uh, as you know, uh, since the last time we postponed it and we pushed it out, and uh, we finally did meet, uh, Shirley and I, once and twice, and we did meet with staff. And in the last meeting with staff, we decided that uh, we were going to draft up a letter to present to the city, uh, to present to city council our intentions to separate. And in the report, I have a copy of all the different things that we did to get to that point. The last two pages is a draft only of the letter. Okay. When we met with Ed uh, and talked
Todd had suggested that we do this in the form of a memo or letter to the mm -hmm. city council, and David is the one that, that, that did a beautiful job in summarizing what all he and I have done. I think he and I have met uh, four or five times, and oh we yeah. met with Todd once, and then we met with Todd again with Ed, and I don't think it's just not letting me do this. But anyhow, it's something that David and I agree is the right time for this to happen, to separate these two, because it didn't make any sense to me when I first came is that we have the Historic Resources Board approve things to us. And it seems to me like it's much better for San Juan Batista to have that extra layer of people who are dedicated to doing that particular function and then making recommendations that board to this commission is what made sense to me. Mm -hmm. So that being said, uh, review the letter. Let me know. Uh, I, I know there's some typos in it, so I've already, I haven't even caught that just today. So uh, let I, me know what. I won't find them. Uh, <laughs> find them. Please find them. Somebody will. No. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I'm sure you will. Uh, so let's look at this. Let, me, let us know what you think. If it has the right language or right verbiage in there, let's go forward. And it, it really introduces our intention. I think that's the nicest way to go. They get to review it and come back to us. They can send us a letter back to us and let us know wh which direction they're going to go with. And uh, we're, we're there to support them. And basically, uh, it, it kind of outlines what we think should happen and basically uh, what we would expect to hear from, from them in return. And I think that's the best way to go. So let us know uh, what you think about the letter. If we need to make some changes on it, fine. Let's do that. And then when we're ready, we'll go ahead and present the letter to the, our staff. They can take it forward. Great. Thank you. This is a lot of work. Thank you. Both of you very much. So the other thing, too, is... Um, um, what was I thinking of? I've been thinking, I've been busy all day today. I've, I've had all kinds of things to do today. But anyway, um, help me here, Shirley. Well, I, what, what we're trying to do now is to get a kind of a consensus amongst us, us to, uh, should we go forward? Is there anything else that we need to, um, to do at this point? And we're trying, what we're trying to ask the city council is, do we have your thoughts and blessings to go forward with this or is this just not going to happen and they don't think we ought to do it at this point yeah yeah i think it's a cordial and gentle way of approaching it get a gentle and cordial way answer back and because it might hit it might freak people out i don't know and uh i don't think it's going to be an overnight process and uh we'll be ready for whatever they want and i think um when it comes to this subcommittee, I think this is it. Let us know what you think, and we'll go forward with that, and then we'll take it from there. And then it'll be up to city council. We just got to get an answer back from city council because they don't know what's going on right now, and we don't know what that answer is going to be. All we did get some feelers out there, and we did get some feedback from city council, in in, in a roundabout way, and it was positive. So, and other members of so I think the timing there. is right. If you're worried about that part, yeah, no, yeah, I think that's right. sure, it's some some things to consider. Um, the planning commission is established by the state law, right? It has to happen, hence the uh, the television and the, the council appointment and so forth. In my experience in in Salinas, um, we established a historic review board, and I also managed a um, a design review board for the historic downtown Salinas. And uh, to combine those two into one, and it'd be a less formal meeting. It wouldn't necessarily be televised. That would be up to the council, I suppose. But it's just a way of advising the planning commission and the city council. So it becomes an advisory to the planning commission and to the council. Mm -hmm. And it's just a little less formal. I, that's the way we did it in Salinas. Um, you could take any size, shape, or form that you wanted. But since I've been down that road a little bit, um, uh, the two go well together. The two go well together. The architectural review. But if you had an infill project in your downtown, you would want it to, to be in, in sync with the other buildings. And so that's on. You might have an architect on that, on that review board, for example. Yeah. 
Um, and so, and so uh, there's a lot of varieties, a lot of varieties if you're going to change it, right. which you can, a lot of different directions you can go. Okay. Thank you. So Questions? I think we got a good start. Questions? Just have to read it first. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's more than so, well, well, okay. So, time. What about? Uh, I mean, are you comfortable? We just carry this into the next meeting, uh, into August, and see where we're at for at that point in time. Or do you, I don't think we need to push it any faster than we're doing right now. So. Uh, okay. No. All right. Let's. So let's hold us off as far as a response and how we want to go. With the letter and all that good stuff, and then we'll set that up for next August, our our August this meeting. August. Yeah, this August. This August. <laughs> this August. <laughs> all right. All right. Moving along to number eight uh, comments. Any planning commissioner comments? No. Anybody? Just a couple things from the <laughs> my career in. Fourth of July is coming up. Everybody, please be safe. Um, and remember, be mindful. Pets and veterans yeah. do not like, like big like booms. Yeah. Um, so I don't think anybody in this room is going to be out setting off cherry bombs or MAs. But yeah. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it, but please be safe and have a great 4th of July week. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. City planner, anything? No comments, sir. Mr. Reynolds, anything? No comments. Okay, thank you. Welcome aboard. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We, we will be as That's what we should have. We had a nice welcome. Thank you for oh, no. being we here. The last words I had with <laughs> the last word I had with Ed was, "What are you still doing here?" <laughs> well, uh, not that we were. Come see me on the ninth, right? Uh, yeah. A week from tonight at the library. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, at what time? Four. Four. Four to six. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, motion to adjourn. Thank Make you. a motion, we adjourn. Second. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 No days. Thank you very much, everybody. Good meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there's a reception. Oh, yeah. We're going to get a little hot coffee. Oh.